Hey y'all, it's Jess. So, the world is not a very sensory friendly place, let alone in a pandemic. And so, if anyone's having problems with sensory processing, or sensory overload, or anything to do with your senses, then I wanted to make a video for you. So, I talked about it in my video, The Autistic Neurotype. Um, specifically in how it relates to um, autistics, but I want to talk to everybody who's having these sensory issues, whether you have sensory processing disorder, autism, bipolar disorder, any kind of like emotional uh, stuff going on in your life. Your sensory system is part of the human nervous system, and it dictates the ability to sense your environment through taste, touch, smell, balance, hearing, just all of that. And your sensory system is in flux because your nervous system can't regulate your senses. The world is a very sensory unfriendly place. We've got all this, the Wi-Fi and the gamma rays and noise pollution and actual like physical pollution and crowds and lights and neon and everything flashing in our faces all the time. Everything's so like fast paced. You can't, it, it's a wonder that anyone can keep up. No wonder, like, the enti this entire generation is depressed. Um, so a lot of this has to do with your sensory needs not being met. So here's what you can do to manage those. So the first thing you can do is look to accommodate your sensory needs. So if you have an environment that is sensory unfriendly, that you're constantly in, see what changes you can make to make it more sensory friendly. Also, my bedroom, for example, was cluttered and a mess and I almost didn't like being in here. So I rearranged and redecorated everything and now it's completely sensory friendly. Every time I come in here, there's not one thing about it that stresses me out, um, except for maybe the paint job over there. There used to be coat hooks right there and I painted around the plastic bar. Indeed, very ugly. You can also ask for help and ask for assistance from other people who can uh, change things to fit your sensory needs, whether you're at work or home with your family, whatever it is that's bothering you, just talk it out and see what kind of accommodations they can make for you. Another thing is self-regulation. So if you're in a big position where you can't change your environment around you to be more sensory friendly, then go to somewhere that you are sensory relaxed and just kind of decompress from the day of lots of sensory input. Develop a process of you, what you know works to calm you down. The next thing you can do is to recognize triggers, what sensory overwhelms you. So if you're hyposensitive like me, and things just keep building up and you don't notice until it hits a breaking point, then practicing mindfulness so that you don't get all this stimulus that you're unaware of until suddenly you overload. Third thing that will help you is having a support system and having people close to you who can talk to about your difficulties, people who you trust. When you've found these people and they agree that they can be part of your support system for this, then ask them for what you need. If you just want them to listen to you as you talk about all the struggles that you're having, if you want them to offer advice to you, just whatever you need in the way that they can personally support you. Just tell them that. Another way that someone can be a support system for you is developing with them steps that you can take when you're in overload so that they can deactivate the situation. So the process might look like telling them I'm in sensory overload so that they can talk to you to calm you down or make a certain decision for you so that you're not stressing, stressing out about trying to make a choice, um, just removing you from the situation altogether, letting you uh, put headphones on and just listen to music for a little bit before you continue with whatever it is that you're doing. Anything that would help you in sensory overload to calm down. The next suggestion is something that I personally have, is a calm down playlist. So creating a playlist on Spotify of music or on YouTube of like video clips or music uh, video that calm you down so that when I can feel myself starting to get stressed, I immediately just put that on. It's peaceful music, some uh, movie scenes that I have memorized that the repetition helps me to take my mind off of things that are going on because I know what's going to be playing. 
um, funny videos, anything, a uh, co collection of pictures even. And just to get you out of everything that's going on around you and just focus on something for a certain amount of time just to calm down. And my last tip is comfort items. So I keep certain stim toys in my purse because I'm autistic and I like to fidget with toys and it can kind of help me block out everything else that's going on or help me process. Playing with them helps me actually process everything that is going on. Uh, might be not be stim toys, could be uh, a certain uh, jacket that always makes you feel a little bit calmer, that's warm and fuzzy. If it's hot weather out, then maybe uh, something else. Uh, a stuffed animal that you can keep in your bag with you that just calms you down when you hold it or look at it. Uh, any kind of sensory equipment that might help you either process what is actually happening to you and it, so you don't feel scatterbrained of everything that's being thrown at you at once and it feels more orderly or something that just takes your mind off of everything so that you can calm down. Well that's it. I hope this video was helpful for you guys in that some of these tips have uh, given you an idea of how you can combat sensory processing when it turns against you. If you have any uh, other suggestions, leave them in the comments so that people, other people can see uh, some other advice. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.